Hello, everyone. Uh, one thing I like to study is Silicon Valley. And if you, if you pay attention to financial news of any kind, you've probably realized that Silicon Valley, the greater San Francisco Bay Area, has sort of taken over as the not only the tech center, but in a way also the financial center of the country and of the world to a great extent, especially in terms of venture capital. If you look at the unicorns, the billion-dollar startups, they are mostly, well, the, the, the big bulk of them are located just in the San Francisco Bay Area, more than any other metro by far. And in the old days, you would look to other areas like New York City, or New England, or Chicago, for the big, this big type of financial and investment empire. But that's changed. You know, you still have Wall Street, of course, in New York, and you have uh, other types of firms. The uh, in Boston, you know, the hedge the hedge funds and. But when, if you look at things from the standpoint of companies, production, uh, the high-value companies, a lot of the money around the world is gravitating toward Silicon Valley. So how did this happen? Well, first, it's, first of all, you have to look back. It pretty much started with the personal computer revolution, the PC revolution, which, you know, maybe around the late 70s or early 80s, where Silicon Valley had a, a big advantage. First of all, most of the chips were made here. And you had companies like Hewlett Packard and Apple, which eventually came to dominate things. So that was, when I was growing up, there were no personal computers in the home, at least not in the average home. Maybe a very wealthy family might have had something, but generally speaking, there weren't any, any available. And they started coming out later, and mainly in the 80s, and that was, it was a revolution, and a lot of money poured into the San Francisco Bay Area. But then, right after that, you had a second revolution, the Internet Revolution. Again, Silicon Valley was able to dominate during that revolution. You had Cisco producing the routers, Intel again with the, with the microchips, and a lot of the, the large companies, the large web companies, were like Yahoo, eBay, were again based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's back-to-back -back revolutions. And then, if that weren't enough, you had the revolution with the mobile devices, at least for the United States. The mobile devices, and it was a two-pronged revolution. You had the mobile devices and also social media for the United States, which, of course, is the world's largest market in terms of, well, dollar-wise, anyways. And... Silicon Valley, again, was at the forefront with Apple, of course, with the, coming out with the iPod and then the iPhone. And then you had social media companies like Facebook and Twitter here in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley. And that revolution was very low, had a very low overhead cost in comparison to something like manufacturing, where you had to build factories. So a lot of profits could come in for many types of companies. And consequently, you had these three economic revolutions within about 30 year, less than 40 years. And you had money coming in. Money, a lot of people getting wealthy. And if they reach a certain level, they could become an accredited investor which means I think basically you have to be about a millionaire to become an accredited, accredited investor. And if you made it to that point, 
And a lot of people did. So there was a lot of money coming in. You could go with the venture capital company, and that's where the venture capital firms get their capital. And a lot of the, that was happening right in the greater San Francisco Bay Area. And that's why the place is basically rolling with money.